The team keep it clean. The Ravens had a presser today that featured offensive coordinator Greg Roman, special teams coordinator Chris Horton, uh, defensive coordinator Mike McDonald, and Ravens new safety Marcus Williams. And, and Greg Roman, in this press conference, when speaking about the offense, well, obviously he talks about the offense. He's offensive coordinator. Um, but he said that they need to adapt, evolve, and adjust. And when he said that, I was thinking... I, I just I hope this is not one of those things where it's like one another one of those sound bites and those clips that you know the Ravens fans because Ravens fans they remember everything when Greg Roman said hey we about to forge a new identity Ravens fans they reminded him of that every single week when Greg Roman said hey we got some stuff in the vault Ravens fan they still talking about that vault till this day so I just hope that this is one of those things that we see it we we, we see that promise delivered. Uh, but we'll see how this thing goes because Ravens have definitely built this Greg Roman offense. They got the offensive line right. They got about 23 tight ends on the squad right now. Uh, Lamar should be back. They got about 16 running backs. So they like, hey, g -Ro, we got you. So anyway, it started off. It like cut it. The press has started off like cutting into Greg Roman. He was already speaking. But anyway, um, he was asked about Lamar Jackson not being there. And we know that's a hot topic right now. I think um, Ravens only got like four more days left for OTA, something like that. Um, but anyway, talked about Lamar Jackson not being there. He said he's not going to get into Lamar not being there. Uh, he said their job as coaches is to develop everybody to their fullest when they're here, we can do that. And I'm sure Lamar, Lamar is working hard, but I'm sure he'll also have a chance to talk to you guys sometime about him not being at OTAs. And I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm not trying to, like, start anything, but hearing the way that John Harbaugh spoke about Lamar Jackson, say, oh, he'll, he'll, he'll tell you about that when he, when he does or whatever. I'll let him tell you about that. Uh, and then hearing and, and seeing the way Greg Roman responded to that question, too, just really throwing it on Lamar. It was like, it just, it seemed like it's something, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But it just seems a little bit off. The, the vibe just seems off. I don't know if it's only me. And if y'all don't feel that way, hey, let me know. But if you caught that same kind of vibe from Harbaugh and Greg Roman, it, it just seemed like the vibe is off. Anyway, um, he said about the young wide receivers that they are diligent. Said the core guys are taking another step like Bateman, Prochet, uh, Duvernay and Tylen Wallace um, But he said that He said they're still seeing progress um, And he said they're not doing any game planning right now You know OTAs, they don't do none of, none of the game planning stuff yet um, He talked about Charlie Collar uh, He said that he's a really big target Good all around player Said uh, Isaiah Likely is good at doing things Unscripted um, And he does good as a receiver uh, Now, I don't know if he was mentioning like, uh, like a wide receiver Or just a receiving tight end as In a pass catcher So anyway uh, he says that when they envision what they can do, it'll be different from last year and different from the year before as well. So those differences. Anyway, um, he said Boyle looks like a completely new guy than he did before. And that's cool. We hope that he is. Uh, we just hope that Boyle stays. We really hope that everybody stays healthy. Really. Because that's been. We hope everybody stays healthy. Because I ain't even got to get into it. Now, he talked about Tyler Lindenbaum, him taking reps with the ones and whatnot. And Greg Roman said that it's his goal to have Lindenbaum laying in bed shaking, worrying about the next thing. And by training camp, for him not to be worried about it anymore. So as far as his assignments, his techniques, all that good stuff, that he wanted him to be like sweating over all that stuff right now. But then come training camp, it'd be like, oh, OK. I remember those days back when I was sweating and I was worried about that, but I ain't worried about it no more. So... I was like, okay, good. I'm glad you explained that, G-Row, because we ain't want to have another one of those Michael Pittman Jr., Matt Ryan comments. But anyway, um, he also reiterated that they are getting a lot done, but that they only have on shorts and it's no pads. And he, he wanted to really make that clear. And I appreciated that about Greg Roman's part of the presser because uh, we, we know, like, right now, we are all fiends for football. We all just want some. We want to see more and more. And, of course, as we draw closer and closer to football being here, it's like, oh, man, we just want to see something. So if you see somebody get mossed in, in OTA, it's like, oh, they got mossed. And it can, it can be really exciting. And there's nothing wrong with being excited over it. But we still got to remember that there are no pads on. So they're not out there tackling. They're not hitting. they barely even pressing. So, yeah, got to keep that in mind. 
Um, he said as far as Lamar Jackson, there are going to be some new things that he'll need to learn, but most of it he already knows. Said it, uh, Lamar should know about 80% of it and the other 20% that he'll need to learn and sort of play catch up. Um, and he said they want to have more production out of the passing game from the uh, from the running backs, too. And that's something that was expected uh, definitely last year. But then literally everybody got hurt. Um, now, he was asked about he was asked how his job with with it coming with so much public scrutiny, which it does. It really does. I, I, I give it to Greg Roman, man, because I'm sure him, his family, they be seeing all this different stuff that people be saying. And they probably like, oof, ah, yikes. But, hey, he still got a job. He still got his job, so he's smiling in everybody's faces right now. Um, but he they, he was asked, how do you handle whether it's a former player on NFL Network? They didn't say no names, but we knew who they were talking about, Steve Smith Sr. Or a current player. They didn't say no names, but we knew who they were talking about, Hollywood Brown. Uh, what is your philosophy on dealing with it? And he said, we have to stay focused on what we stay focused on. Uh, and he said, you're usually your own harshest critic, and you know the truth about stuff. And, and this was it. He said, you shouldn't get set in your ways. You have to adapt, evolve, and adjust, and don't worry about a thing. So, just let's deliver on that. Again, obviously, health, that's the biggest thing. But if health is right, let's really deliver on that. You shouldn't get set in your ways. You have to adapt, evolve, and adjust. He said it, not me. Moving on. Next up was Chris Horton, the special teams coach. He said uh, Sam Cook retired, and now he's standing next to him coaching players. Um, and he said Jordan Stout is a good young player. Said he can do all three kickoffs, punts, and he can hold. Now, when he said all three, I thought he was going to be talking about kicking field goals, but he's talking about holding. But he did throw in there he could kick field goals in there as well. Um, he said that he'll be coached to the max, and he said with Sam, and I appreciate this a lot, with Sam Cook, he can give Stout that in-game experience coaching that some of the coaches can't, and that's true. That's why guys like uh, Zachary Orr, the linebacker's coach, he can help out a lot in that, and, and, and show these players something that a lot of the coaches can't. Because when you've actually, and this is really with anything, whether it's a job, whether it's football, whatever it may be, if you, you can have somebody that can be your manager or whatever, your coach or whatever, and they can teach you a lot, but there can be a bit of a disconnect where there's some areas that they just, they've never done it before. They've never done it before. But then you have these people that have been there, done that, in whatever area or field it is, and they can show you things in a, com a completely different way. And a lot of times you find yourself appreciating uh, they're teaching to you that much more simply because they have been there, done that. They've been in your shoes before, so they know exactly what it's like to be in your position. So you can gain a lot of knowledge and wisdom from them because they're no longer in your position, but they're coaching you now. They're training you now. They're uh, managing you now. So you appreciate what they have to say that much more. Um, he talked about uh, this month, just about falling, finding the small little details and fine tuning them. I uh, said that Stout, he doesn't have to be Sam Cook. He just got to be Jordan Stout. Uh, and he talked about timing and rhythm uh, for Stout with working, uh, with working with Justin Tucker. Talked about timing being everything. And said, yeah, for, for sure, especially when it comes to the kicking game. Um, he said that they uh, they did give up a kickoff return that he won't ever let go. But said for them to be a top unit, top special teams unit, uh, they just have to be better than the team that they played the previous week. Now, I'm trying to, when he said that, I didn't look it up because I, I thought this way was more fun. But I was really trying to remember when, what, what kickoff return did the Ravens give up last year? Was it the Vikings? I th was it the Vikings game? Or was it the chart? Mm. I feel like it was the Vikings game. Cause I think the Vikings game was when they, they gave up the big touchdown to Justin Jefferson. And I think they gave up a kick return, but I, I don't remember for sure. But y'all, please, please let me know because uh, I'm not going to look it up. I'd rather say, it, it's more fun this way to look for it in the comments section. Um, but he said that coaching is about keeping it simple. He said you can actually overcoach guys and give them too much. And I appreciate it when he said that. He said you don't want to do that. Take it just one play at a time. Then up next was Mr. Mike McDonald, the Ravens' new defensive coordinator. 
Uh, he said the system is coming along fine, and he said it's taking him a bit of time really getting used to going from coaching one position group like he was before with the Ravens uh, to coaching the entire defense. That's a lot of responsibility right there. Uh, he said the game is slowing down for Patrick Queen. Uh, and th this, again, this is another big year for Patrick Queen. Big year. Um, if Patrick Queen can just maintain a level of consistency, um, Patrick Queen can do some really nice things. He can do some really, really nice things. And we hope that Patrick Queen can just, because, again, the, the flashes were there. The, the promise was there. He did have some hiccups here and there, too. Um, but if it's, it's about showing more flashes than hiccups. That's all. Because there's always going to be hiccups from everybody, no matter how great, no matter how good a player. They're always going to have their hiccups. But it's about showing the good stuff uh, a lot more. Um, so we just hope that Patrick Queen goes and kills it this year. Because, again, this is the year where Ravens have to decide, all right, after this season, if they're going to pick up Patrick Queen's fifth-year option or not. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, he said with Kyle Hamilton, he is as advertised. Uh, he said with the rookies, they have to keep finding things to mess up on. Because if, if they ain't doing everything perfect, then, like, what are you going to coach them on? Not that you can't coach them, but if they're doing everything perfect, then, like, wh where's the critiquing going to come from? Where's the like, so you get what he's saying. Um, he was asked, what will Chuck Clark's role be? Uh, he said it's early, too early to tell. Said they aren't really asking them to play positions all the time. Uh, he said things will change by situation and game plan. So he was very, very vague on Chuck Clark. And it started getting me to wondering. But anyway, um, he was asked, how do you anticipate the pass rush developing? And he said with the pass rush, uh, it'll be as they figure out who can do what. Like, what does this guy specialize in? Oh, okay, what's his specialty and whatnot? Uh, and he said the pass rush is really married to what you're doing in coverage. I was like, oh, okay. well, that, that's a really great answer. And it makes sense. So then last but not least, and I think actually he had the least amount of time up here because Marcus Williams, he came on and he was off. When he first stepped up there, though, I, I got hyped because I, I can't lie, I got hyped. I saw the hoodie and that, like, that style of hoodie. Uh, I, I saw the, the, the arms cut off And I said hold up This dude a little bigger than I thought uh, But I saw the arms cut off I said hold up Is, it, is that Marcus Peters or Marcus Williams? Because for a quick second He looked like Marcus Peters and I was like oh he's back But it, it, it was Marcus Williams But still shout out to Marcus Williams though But again it was really really quick uh, He said the Ravens practice is good Really fast pace Said uh, Mike McDonald puts the defense in a way Where they can learn it fast and efficiently um, he said that they don't just play one position on the defense, but they can play each position. And that's been a, a, a constant that we've been hearing uh, all offseason. That it's almost going to be, you know, how, they, how like they like to say positionless basketball. Um, it almost sounds like it's going to be positionless football. Not necessarily to that extent, but to where a guy, yeah, he's a safety, but okay, he's coming down to play some corner a little bit. They may give you different looks, have guys all over the field, and you just don't know what's going on. That kind of remind me of Rex Ryan a little bit. Shout out to Rex, man. Um, he said the OTAs have been good for him to get to know his new teammates, and that's true because he had been in New Orleans for the past like uh, four or five years. Uh, he said always adding extra pieces to your defense and adding depth is good because that's when they asked him about how he felt when they drafted uh, Kyle Hamilton. Um, and he was also asked, how much is Chuck Clark helping you? He said that he asked Chuck a lot of questions, uh, and he's definitely a leader and someone that he uh, latched on to. So this was a cool little quick presser. Um, I'm, I feel like, again, I don't think they have any more OTAs for the rest of this week, but I'm not 1,000% sure uh, on that. But we'll, of course, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, Team Keep It Clean, appreciate y'all. Shout out to Giro, Chris Horton, Mike McDonald, and Marcus Williams for uh, giving us fans uh, some of their time with this press. And shout out to the Ravens for even presenting it in the first place. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. And we out.